breaking news, <laughs> a, a quick uh, programming update. Since next Monday is Memorial Day, and I expect all of you to be enjoying the Memorial Day, uh, we're going to push everything this week a day. Ask Nicks will be on Tuesday. Freestyle will be on Wednesday. Going Deep will be on Thursday. And then back to our regular schedule programming the following week. Tuesday's going to feel like a Monday. You're going to need an Ask Nick is, I think, the yeah. philosophy. And if for all the people who are tight with their schedules, we apologize in advance. But whatever you're doing on Memorial Day, uh, we want you to enjoy it. And we'll be uh, with you the rest of the week. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another exciting episode of the Vile Files Going Deeper Edition. You look like you were trying to say something. You were oh. like, like, just you had it ready, like lined up now. Topically, would you guys consider yourself a bit of a love hate relationship? <laughs> oh, for sure. No. <laughs> no. I feel like Nick. Nick has like a Nick. Oh, one time I was on a. He's call, not even looking at me. I was on a call with Allie. I have a million things trying to like go out in my head, and you're just more self conscious about that than I think. What? One time I was on a call with Allie, and and we, it was like one of our like one on ones, and she goes, oh my "God." She goes, "I don't." Th you yeah, you were like, "We have a love hate." I was like, "Oh." <laughs> We do. <laughs> we 100% do. You have a love hate. <laughs> no, I feel like we have you I just when people are always like what's Nick like? I'm like he's it's I never had an older brother, but I think that would be the vibe. What is our show about today? What isn't our show? It's about, about? love hate. Le our yeah. show is about There's love hate. It's about weddings. It's not really about that. Some weddings. We talk we talk Kardashian weddings. We talk little batch. Uh, rejection. Yeah. Uh, Madison Watkins, our guest, a very talented musician. You might know her from American Idol. We talk about dating your friends dating and your friends. whether yeah. you can be friends with someone after you have crossed that line into romantic territory. Texting office hours. Mm -hmm. It's a great show. It's really, it keeps you on your toes. This week was wild, guys. I, I'm exhausted. I, I, I hope our audience likes how our show is evolving. It can be a chaotic at times. 100%. But I feel like for the best. When you get deep, you find a little bit of chaos sometimes. Yeah. I think Connor Wood's coming back next next week. Bestie. We're just gonna like talk to Connor about him sex shaming me at game night. Oh. I doubt that was his intention, but That's how I felt. Cool. You felt sex shamed. I felt judged. <laughs> just for right. throwing out a dirty word in a game. All right. Uh, no, Connor's going to be with us. It'll be fun. We'll uh, have our texting office hours. We'll uh, get, uh, you know, whatever culturally is relevant in the world we'll talk about with Connor. It, we'll probably get some uh, dating app tidbits from a guy who I think, he didn't he used to work for Bumble? Connor, or, yeah. 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 Was it Bumble or was it, was it Hinge? It was Bumble. Yeah, the last time he was here, he gave us some very insider information on what profile views get the most likes anyway all right let's get to uh madison madison welcome hi how are you oh my gosh loaded question what's wrong <laughs> where do you want to begin wherever you want You're the oh guest. my gosh no yeah. no 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 uh, thing, things are uh, good you're, things they're are good. good okay yeah. just wanted to make sure i yeah. asked you before we started recording if you were familiar with the show because i was going to give you a little kind of like Here's what we talk about. Just right. to prep you, and then you said, "Oh, there's a story, yeah, about how you are familiar with the show." So, what is your? I'm I'm anxious. I'm yeah. curious. I don't know if it's a good story or a bad story. Well, do you remember meeting me oh, before God. today? Should I have? <laughs> I don't know. Probably not. Probably not. No, wait. Yeah. No, no, no. Where did it's we meet? It's not like it's not like at an event. It's nothing like. It's this is a funny story. Okay. So God. this was like I think three years ago. Oh, when boy. did you start the podcast? Well, three years ago. Okay. Well, there we go. There we go. I think it was right when you started the podcast. I had listened right when you started. Okay. And I'm at Jones on Third oh, in, in yeah. the Valley one yeah. day. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Say no more. Say no more. <laughs> Listen, I was there this morning. That's where there. I ate breakfast this morning. <laughs> I'm, uh, I go there. I haven't gone in a while. That's shocking to me. Wow. I haven't gone in a couple months. But anyways, I frequent, frequent. Frequent visitor. flyer at, yeah. <laughs> at Jones on Third. Yeah. So you were sitting by yourself there eating 
Sorry, that sounds so sad. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Uh, Destigmatize eating yeah, alone. No, yeah, no, no, absolutely. I love it. I love it. I love yeah, it. Yeah, I uh, absolutely just de- de- destigmatize. I've I eat alone a lot. I yeah. used to eat alone a ton. <laughs> Not so much anymore. Yeah. But, so you were eating alone, and I guess I just listened to one of the episodes, and I walked up to you, and I was like, so nervous. Like it was like I don't know why but i was i was like hey so um i just want to let you know i love your podcast and like said some i don't even know what i said and you were like oh thanks like i was weird (laughs) not weird not weird caught off guard caught off guard and but then i like sat back in my seat and i'm like stupid stupid." like why did you do that but then now i'm on your podcast so it's it's kind of a full circle moment Mm -hmm. also when people say they listen to my podcast. I'm I'm usually because at first it was always I'm always, I'm generally awkward when people come up in general, but that I was more awkward when it was more bachelor focused, right? And so right. usually when people come up when I'm eating lunch uh, or I'm I can be weird sometimes. But you know what's weird is like I don't think I've ever done that. It was very like because if I see somebody I admire, I'm like oh I love them whatever. And I don't know. It was. It was just. It, I don't know what came over me. But, but I, just, I said thanks. Yeah, you were. You were sweet. Okay. But I could tell you were kind of like, I'm eating. Like, <laughs> why are you talking? To me? I gave you an I'm eating look. A little bit, but it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I probably would have done the same thing if I was like. Mid, I don't think you're mid bite. But I, if I was mid bite. All right. Well. So I'm so honored to be here today. We're honored. Thank to have you guys you. for having me. Um, this is amazing. Since three years ago, you have found yourself on American Idol. I have. And last year, and you crushed it. Thank you. Well, how you went fi- like you were one of the finalists? Yes, I was. And now you have a new song coming out called "If You Wanted to, You Would." Yes. Which come uh, on is come on. We talk about that a lot. Let's talk about yeah. it. Well, the internet talks about that even more. And if the, he wanted, if to. he wanted to, mm-hmm. he would is a common trope. Is a trope? Do we call it a trope? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Do we know what the definition of trope is? A I word that... or expression used in a figurative sense, a figure of speech, a common or overused theme or device, cliche, the usual horror mo- movie tropes of freight. Like, okay. Yeah. I think yeah. I used it correctly. You did. Yeah. You did. Yeah. If Good he job. wanted to, he would. And so that was the inspiration of Def- your song. 1,000%. Um, but I kind of wanted is it Is there a particular to be... guy that you were writing okay, it about? Okay. Hang on. Hang on a second. Hang on. You don't have to say there who was, it was. Of course there was. Okay. Of course there was. But just in general, I think that that is a phrase that everybody says. And I wanted it to be, because guys feel that way too, right? So I was like, I'm going to I'm gonna say if you, because somebody can specifically, oh, do you not feel like that? If she wanted to, she would. Or you're, I'm, I'm thinking out loud. Yeah. I think, no, I think in the dating space, it's a little bit more confusing for guys because I think society has told us that men are supposed to chase and women are supposed to be pursued. That's the Mm -hmm. kind of societal norms that we still try to, we still have, even though we're changing other aspects and expectations of dating. Right. And I think as guys, I think, Sometimes we wonder, we, we think, well, we, sh- we should. And if, if that's, I think we're sometimes can, guys can get confused is the, is she playing hard to get or is she just not interested in me? Mm. Cause it's the op- opposite. Like, you know, no, that's good. Am I supposed to like, wait, you said you didn't, I mean, I've, I've, I've had that before where, you know, you're just like someone a uh, girl I was dating or pursuing said something to me that I was just like, okay, well, you know, I guess it's, that's over with. Right. And then only to like get a, like some sort of message like a couple of days later. And, and I, and, and she basically told me that I interpreted it incorrectly where it was like, I was like, oh, okay. well, yeah, well. What I, can you do? I would rather just, <laughs> I'm just, I'm here to respect your boundaries and, and, so like I don't know. It just seemed like yeah. maybe you were in, uninterested. So right. I, so I I don't know if if guys feel exactly that way. This is this is what I I feel like from the guys that I have 
not been super interested in, but they've been interested in me. I think I'm kind of more just like, you know, I'll text them back whenever, like, you know, whatever. But, and I think that's what I'm talking about. It's like, if she wanted to text you back, she would. If she wanted to hang out with you, she would make it. Like, for me, that's how I am. I'm like, if I want to hang out with you, we meet somewhere. Say we, we meet last night. I want to hang out with you the next day. Like, I would love for you to take me out the next day. So I'm like, let's go. If I'm interested in you, let's will, go. Will you ask? What? Will you tell them? Tell them what? That you want to date them. You meet a guy. Yes. You're excited. Right. You're just like, I had a great time. Yeah. And he's just like, can I get your number? And you're like, sure. Right. And maybe there's some sort of like... I'll call you or like some vague yeah, 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 right, kind right. of like it's unclear who mm-hmm. agreed to who. And after you leave, you're like, wait, did did they say they would text mm-hmm. or did I or was it, you know, there's a little bit yeah. of confusion. Are you someone who is just like, no, fuck it. I'm just going to say, let's get together. Or do you see if he's going to reach out and ask you out on a, a proper date, as they might say? I think every situation is different, but I think me as a woman, I'm not I'm not afraid. Okay. I'm not afraid to be like, this is usually what I'll do. Like, let's say it's vague. Before I leave wherever we are, I'm going to be like, hey, you're super vague. But just to let you know I'm interested in you, take that for what it is. And then if it's like after that, he's like, sweet, let's hang out tomorrow. Or like, let's go on a date next week. I'm like, cool. If he's not, if he wanted to, he would. So I'm very much like, I'm very open. And I, I'm not scared to get rejected. So if somebody was just like, no. I'd be like, okay, then you're not my guy. We're, you're not scared to get rejected. No. And is that something that you've always felt that way? No. Or is that, okay. I've developed, I think I've developed that since I moved to LA. Because the city is so weird and people have so many different backgrounds and whatever that I'm just like, I don't take it personally because I feel like if I'm meant to be with someone, we're both going to be on the same page. So if he's super into me, I'm not into him. It's not it. Student loans, they suck. And if you want to pay off your student loans faster, listen up. Let's talk about your student debt. You could potentially save thousands with refinancing. Federal student loan payments are on hold, but with rates this low, now is a good time to refinance. A road trip, a couch, a savings account. If you could save on student loans, what would you do with that extra money? So many options. Well, Ernest was voted best student loan refinancing overall by Nerd Wallet. If Nerd Wallet likes them, you know they're legit. Ernest has some of the lowest rates, flexible payments, and an in house team ready to help. With Ernest, you can change your interest rate, get a lower monthly payment, and you never pay fees, not even late fees. By refinancing, you can reduce your loan term, save money, or combine multiple loans into simple monthly payments. And if you have questions, you can even talk to a real live human at Ernest for help. With Ernest, it only takes two minutes to see what a new rate could be, and there's no credit impact. And right now, Ernest is offering our listeners a $100 cash bonus. Refinance your student debt at earnest.com slash V-I-A-L-L, now available in all states. Once again, you get a $100 cash bonus when you visit earnest.com slash V-I-A-L-L to refinance your student loans. Visit earnest.com slash V-I-A-L-L for more details. Not available in all states. Terms and conditions apply. Earnest student loan refinancing made by Earnest Operations, LLC, NMLS, pound 1204917, California financing law, license number 6054788535, Mission Street, San Francisco, California, 94105. Visit earnest.com slash licenses for full list of licenses. So was there a moment that you found out, like you realized, you know what? I just got turned down. It's fine. It's not rejection. Mm -hmm. Like, was there a moment or was it more of a gradual? You must have realized at some point, Mm -hmm. I'm not afraid of rejection. I'll tell you, I. So my big relationship thing that happened to me was I dated a guy for a long time. We were pretty much in the public eye, like, you know, people saw us and whatever. Long story short, we, this is three years after it happened, so I can talk about it, but we were in a very serious relationship, almost got engaged, we were about to get engaged, and then I figured out he was, like, cheating on me with, like, (gasps) mad girls, like, it was mad, it was crazy. When you say mad, you mean many? Yes. Okay. It was, like, a whole other life, basically, that was being lived that I didn't know about. How'd you find out? Um, Through a mutual friend. So one of my guy friends booked a movie with one of the girl's best friends, if that makes sense. 
So okay, yeah. mutual friends. Yeah. And basically what happened was the girl was talking to my guy friend. And she's like, yeah, my friend's dating, blah, blah, blah. And then he's like, oh, no, like my friend's dating, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, no. <laughs> she's like, no, like. And you were like in a full on relationship. Like about to be engaged, like looking at rings. How did you confront the situation? So he ended up telling me because my guy friend texted him and was like, if you don't tell her, I'm going to call her. Okay. Yeah. So basically after that whole relationship ended, it was like, who else can hurt me that bad? You know what I mean? And I'm like, so it was kind of like this, like I was like rock bottom broke. And, and then after that, I'm like, listen, it was, I, it took me a while, but then I figured out who I was and my worth and what I deserve in a man. And I was like, oh, so if I'm not going to be treated like that or if I'm going to be rejected, it's either not it or they're not, I don't want to say good enough to be with me, but they're not on the same level. Yeah. I mean, when people say it's like, oh, they're not good enough to be with me, like someone can accuse them of sounding conceited or cocky, but like it's just knowing your self-worth and it's not like right. a, you're not saying it to disrespect someone else. You're no. saying it is a more of a, I just know the value of my time and my standards i know what i want so after that and i feel like that when girls get to that place it's so healthy because i feel like in every area of my life i feel like that now i feel like that in my career i feel like that with friends i'm like if you're not going to give the same effort that i'm going to give then why are we here yeah what are we doing are you afraid of rejection amanda and <laughs> Okay. What? What's so funny? This is such like a direct question. For her. Yeah. I'm gonna get. Oh, I assume. Such a direct you, question. Well, I assume that you have Sorry. more fear, <laughs> Allie. I think. No, I'm just trying to like. It's a common thing. Yeah, what, so that was good. It took me by surprise. No, I think sometimes I am. I think. I think I. So. So maybe the answer is yes because I think there's like certain headspaces or like chapters of life where like I'm really feeling myself like I think it really depends on how much maybe confident. that's just what it is yeah it's like maybe how, I'm on a good chapter no mm. totally because yeah. it's like I think when like when my self-esteem is high and I'm feeling good about other areas of life then it's really easy to like contextualize rejection as like just a tiny little blip and to like internalize the like I don't want to convince someone to want me like right. I really believe that through and through but sometimes putting that into practice when like you know I just like feel bad about myself is a lot harder so i think i don't know it still hurts Allie. it's still there's still a little piece i'm not saying i'm like superwoman over here it's still like ugh. but then at the same time it's like when you logically think about it is that how it is for you yeah well i think it's it's often not like the rejection from a person themselves it's like what it stirs up Inside like it's of the you. way yeah it's mm. the way it can make me feel about myself which i you know yeah. saying that aloud you're like oh but if, if it's me feeling that way about me i should really be able to like get a handle on this but there's something about how sometimes people can just kind of like poke you in just the right place mm. that it really hurts for some reason right i was just thinking about what you said in terms of like it you think it came from you being really hurt in in your relationship and i and again i thought to myself about my experiences i mean like i like we i think we all have a fear of rejection but i do think i got better with it right after dealing with heartbreak and like some real like feeling real loss in a relationship and i guess it maybe mm -hmm. comes from a place of like what are you going to do? What do you, or, or just knowing, I think when we're younger, there's this idea. I mean, maybe it's our egos decide everyone should love us. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> everyone should like us. Right, right. And the idea when we realize that someone's like, no, nah, it just doesn't do it for me. You know, you're just like, it's, it really, I think, affects us. Right. If we're not used to that. Especially we're not if, used to it. If we grew up in like, you know, um, households or we had friends where we were just adored yeah. and everyone was just like, you're the best and you're the greatest. And <laughs> there comes a point in everyone's life where someone or somebody just says, mm -hmm. it's not, you're not my favorite. You're, you're not, not it. You're you not ain't it, it for me. Yeah. And that, and that you can, ain't it, boo. And I think, I guess when someone deals with heartbreak or mm -hmm. rejection and they have to deal with, say, what you dealt with, 
it really makes some of the those other what we now like what I'm sure you now see is trivial like mm-hmm. trivial things of rejection over someone's like maybe it's a simple like not matching on a dating app or someone just saying hey I'm just not feeling this and and move on that we don't take it less personally I guess yeah maybe that's know. it it's like when I think of it kind of at a bird's eye view of like other people in my life that have liked me and I haven't liked them back it doesn't mean that they they're not as valuable to me it's just maybe we're just not a fit like just recently please don't listen to this podcast I w- <laughs> I went on some dates with one of my guy friends and you want a date with a guy that we we've, we've been friends yeah. with for like 3 years yeah and he has made it very clear for three years that he was about it. You. About me. Yeah. About it. About us. You want to be clear. <laughs> about me. Yeah. I, and so I kind of, I was like, okay, I'm going to give you a shot. Let's do it. We went on a couple dates. And I What was still, the thing that made you? Yeah, after three years. Yeah. That's like, Okay, that's a good turning for a lot, point. Because yeah. for a lot of people, were, you know, a lot of people would would say, you know, uh, if someone were to be like, "Hey, I like this person for like two years," yeah, and I'd be like, "I think they think they don't want to go on a date with you," <laughs> but here you are. Here I am, uh, confusing everyone. Okay, that after, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but what was it? Yeah, so I think I just realized that he had been there for me when a lot of people hadn't been there for me, and it was more of this like, we love each other so much, and I I am like super physically attracted to him. And we did have, like, we were friends, but there were some moments, like, we had kissed once, and it was kind of like, what was that? You know, like, sure. that whole thing. But I was in Vegas, actually, with my friend Nikki that's here with me today, and I was on my way back, and, like, my flight was late. I just had a bad day. And he was like, hey, I'm going to pick you up from the airport. He picks me up from the airport. He has, like, all my favorite snacks. Like, all the, listen, if a man gives a girl some snacks, true. You, we gonna fall in love with you. Okay. So I got in the car and it was like, it hit me. I was like, what am I doing? Like, he has served me and loved me for so long, even through other relationships. This is the type of guy that I would want to marry. Someone that's going to be there for you no matter what. Right? Why don't you want him listening to this? Are you guys in love now? Or are you guys dating? No. I cut it off. <laughs> so what? what I'm so deep. Don't let me get to the end. Okay. Sorry. And so then you were saying this is the type of guy you want to marry. <laughs> yeah, but it it just wasn't the guy. Gotcha. If that makes okay, sense. Yeah. Um, but we went on a couple dates and they were great. And when I was telling him it wasn't going to work out, I was like, it's not because I don't adore you. So it's like what I'm saying is I put myself in in his shoes where I'm like, the way I feel about him, I care so much for him, but it's just not a fit for like long term, right? And I knew that. Doesn't How did mean you that say it to him? I told him that I wasn't going to be able to give him what I know that somebody should give him. Okay. Well, how, did, how did he handle that? He was really sad. Do you think, are you, are you, how do I want to answer this question? Ask, ask this question. Are they going to still be friends? Like, is it going to yeah, affect yeah, it? Yeah. Because. Mm. No, that's a good question. Because. Does he want to still be your friend? I guess he does. He does. He does. We we will be friends. We're just taking some. I feel some like you space. need that. You need the space. You can't just automatically transition right up right into friends. No. And I don't care if it was a few dates or if it was a full relationship. You shifted things for a time. Yep. So it is better, I think, to do a clean break, not see each other, recalibrate, and then come back as friends. I never think that you can just go right into it. Oh, I. I mean, yeah. I don't think he should be her friend. Oh. <gasps> Nay. <laughs> nothing against you. No, no, nothing. I think. But, but here's the thing: we're in the same friend group. Yeah. We mm, do this. That's it's, tough. Yeah. We we have been doing things the same for three years. So the friend group thing is an element of. Actually, I, I think I, I. We have a a really good friend group. It might have been you in questions with Nick. It was it's something to do. Uh, yesterday, my 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 Sunday questions with Nick, and it had something to do with someone asking. I still want to. Is it possible to be friends with an ex and. I said more likely than not, you're just afraid of letting them go and being their friend is a way to, to have some of them because you can't have all of them. And then I asterisked it and said, the exception is being in the same friend group where you're just kind of forced to cordially That's maintain how it is. a level of, you know, civility. Diplomacy. Yeah. 
No, it is because even this this weekend I saw him at a party and it was he came up to me and he's like, Hey Mads, how are you? What's going on? Yeah. And I was like, Yeah, we're good. Like it was good. But it's not that you guys can't be friendly. It's just that we're not going to be. We're not going to be talking not, every day. You're just not friends no. like a friends would. And then one of you will meet someone. And when that person, and that person, like, and when he meets someone, mm -hmm. and then and you guys are still part of their friend group. Eventually, mm -hmm. they're going to ask about you. Of course, and it's going to come up. And if he's an honest guy, he, the only thing to say is like, I had a thing for her, and she just didn't really like me, or mm -hmm. whatever it was. We went on a couple dates, nothing happened, and immediately she just won't see you the same way. I know. Right? And it's just like, and so I guess it just depends on the expectations of the friendship, but it seems like you guys have a reasonable expectation. Like it's you're healthy. friends, you're friendly. Yeah, it's healthy. And he's just trying to be cool around you. But I get, but I get what you mean. Cause I'm not friends with any of my exes, like, yeah. like real exes that I like, cause we only went on a couple dates. Right. So it's not like we dated and sure. we were like, really in it wasn't like that but he he wanted it to be and that's yeah. and that hasn't changed mm -hmm. he's just accepted your decision mm -hmm. so if if he were like if he were here i'd been like i mean like be cool because you're a nice guy but like don't try to be your friend you want him to want to be your friend no i mean probably not how he used to be it's just tough it is because in his mind so he tough. doesn't want that he wants more i know mm -hmm. And I just think once once you him. kind of mentally, <laughs> once you mentally like, and the truth is he never was, like you said, he yeah, was, he was, he was and, always yeah. friendly mm -hmm. and you probably giving him that kind of just a little bit of hope, which listen, he want, he asked for that hope and you gave it to him. I did. Like, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. And he got what he asked for, a chance. Yeah. And he should be grateful for that chance. But now that it's over. <laughs> I think he should just he should be not be your friend. So chance. brutal. Sure, right? Yeah. I mean, if you if you like someone and you 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 that's what you're asking for. You're asking for a shot. Yeah. And that's all you true. can get is an opportunity and it didn't work right. out. Right? No no harm, no foul. No mm -hmm. one's wrong in this scenario. Yeah. I just for him, I don't even know who this guy is, but he would be torturing himself being like what a lot of people do. It's just like, you know what? I'm I could be friends. Yeah, I can see yeah. her and be fine, whatever. I could be fine. Yeah. Well, Godspeed. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he's okay. I hope he is too because I adore him. I really do. What 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 was missing? I'm not comparing it to him. I don't want to compare it to him. No, like, no, no. Because he genuinely, like, I think it's just our personalities. Like, we're both very strong. And not that I don't want strong, but in it's, we just rubbed. You just know? Rub. We just rubbed. Like, in the wrong way. Meaning... And conflict and different things like that. We just, we didn't handle it how I would want to. And I think there wasn't one thing I'm like, I don't like this about you. It was just kind of like this feeling I had. Okay. And I think when we kind of ended things or whatever, he, he admitted that he felt the same way. So it wasn't just like, oh, I'm still in love. He was like, no, I can see where this isn't going to work out. Relationships are... Fickle bunch. Speaking of a relationship that did work out, the Kardashian wedding this weekend. Okay, transition. Thoughts, opinions. Good. I thought the w w it was essentially like an old Italian mob theme wedding, right? Looked like it. It, yep. looked, it looked like a, a scene out of like uh, like The Godfather. I thought it was kind of cool. And it was in Italy. Was so in I Italy. feel like we were already in the mob boss. They did like the, right. they they knelt like. Uh, before was it a priest? It was, who who married them? Some he looked like a priest. It looked or like a, it was a I priest. Mean, yeah. yeah. Okay. It looked very official. They did the whole like old school kneeling thing, which is a very beautiful kind of traditional ceremony. Mm -hmm. Um, how does she kneel in that dress though? It was short. Well, I know. That's, that's what the I'm other saying. thing. What's you wrong? can you can you kneel, kneel in a, short in a dress? long. No, you no, can no, kneel no, in no, both. No, that's it's, not what I'm saying. It's just well, tight. It's I, the transition oh. period. It's not about. Yeah, it's like once I'm you're saying. kneeling, it's fine. But like standing up and down, it's like very hard not to flash. Yeah, I wasn't even thinking about that. I was just thinking about like uncomfortable. Like I don't know. Maybe I just oh like the corset. Do of we it know all. What the corset? Do we know? It, it must have been a theme. See? She's so beautiful. beautiful. You can kneel in a... I mean, Nick, you've been to Catholic weddings. They kneel in full-length dresses all the time. She's no, got I, it even easier. No, I know. I'm saying... Uh, do you, the, whose idea was this, do you think it was? 
For what? The wedding. The, the wedding? Yeah. Like, I mean, like... That it was happening? No, the theme. the theme. Oh. Not like who They've should... They've been like weird gothicness. Not weird. That's judgmental. They've been... This is also not goth. I don't know. It's not, but it definitely fits but their But she theme. transitioned and she had like the black dress for yep. the reception. Yep. She's been seen in like very dark veils. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's had a brand change for she, sure. For sure. For when they started For dating. sure. Mm -hmm. it, it's a... Uh, the, the Kardashians are obviously people who have essentially unlimited resources. Mm -hmm. Right. And when it comes to stuff like this, they can have what they want. And so I just find it fascinating is that this is what they wanted. What, and not in a, like I, I, I'm, I, as someone who grew up very Catholic, I'm down for this. I thought it was cool. Like I could, yeah. I'd be totally down for this. It, like honestly, let's go to Italy and have like an hair, old school, like very Catholic wedding. Like right. that's her fun. Her hair kind of reminded me of and maybe this whole vibe, maybe it's the Italy aspect of it all. But did you guys see House of Gucci? I have not seen it. Okay. No, when Lady Gaga's character like gets married, like definitely like the the bumped up hair. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. It's like maybe it's like old Italy. I don't mm. know. But yeah. And do they have any cultural ties to to Italy? Does, does Travis? I don't know. Because they're, they're Armenian. They're Armenian. But Kim and Kanye got married in Italy way back in the day as okay. well. So maybe it's just a hot spot. Something that they yeah. enjoy, maybe something they're into. I yeah. also think Italy is just like always sort of linked to love in some way. Isn't that, isn't you that, know? Isn't that more France? But I guess Italy too. Yeah, like, yeah. I agree. I agree. Like with there's you. something like very romantic about Italy. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. What would be if you had unlimited resources? What would be your theme? You get For a wedding? Yeah. Unlimited resources. It's just like a Yeah. You, you think it, you have it. Because that's essentially the Kardashians, right? Yeah, I would do Greece. That's what I would do. Yeah, that's you'd want to you do destination. Yeah, but I would make it like crazy, like like also pay for all my friends to come and. No, no, yeah, that that's a, yeah. Say? I'm just a theme. I'm talking about oh, what's your? Oh, that's the theme. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Greece. Theme wedding. Is theme of Greece? Is Greece a theme? Yeah, it's a location. Sure. It's a location. I'm envisioning. <laughs> yeah. That's traditional Al Greece. That's Allie's art. Allie so gets I've done I'm, research yeah. on where in California I would want to go, and I think Santa Barbara is really great. I love the idea of a big white tent with lights and like tables. I also like the idea of the head table being on top of the dance floor, so there's not a hole in the reception, and then they remove the table after dinner. Girl, you've thought about this. Oh, I have. I really have. Um, I will be wearing a large dress, and I don't know who I'm marrying. Perhaps myself, like Jane Lynch in Greece in Do Glee. You so who knows? Do you have a theme <laughs> that me. you would go for, Amanda? <laughs> I like. I feel like uh, maybe this is like very boring, but like something about maybe like okay, family tree in the sense of like I feel like a wedding is really for the family in a lot of ways, and so to having it be very like naturey and having a lot of like fresh plant, like oh. like I don't know, just having it be um, some way of like paying homage to like family history. But the way that would look visually is with like just a lot of plants there. Okay. I, I really like the idea of like having every single guest contribute in some way to like a little thing. Like I think it's really touching how it like at Jewish burials, like many different people will use um, the shovel and pour dirt on the casket. And so I think like some element of that, obviously in, in a more like life affirming <laughs> way, uh, but we're like every single guest is in some way chipping in to some symbol of love. Something I saw, I think it was um, at Sadie Robertson's wedding. She was on Duck Dynasty back in the day. And when she got married, she had her like mom and her grandma and maybe even her great grandma's dresses on display. I saw that. Which too. I thought was cool. Mm -hmm. Just like showing, because then it's like going along with that like familial. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I thought it was like a nice, if you have the dresses, display them. Would you guys wear your mom's dresses? I tried it on recently. I don't think it's my. You tried it on. Mm hmm. What? Did you take photographs of this? Yeah. Do you want to see it? Yeah. Okay. Put it on the screen. I <laughs> will. <laughs> this is why we got a multimedia screen like this for. Yeah. My mom uh, wore her mom's dress. So if I wore. I, she it, still have it? Yeah. I, I don't know why. I could picture you doing that before Allie. Well, because I think Allie is like very, I think you know exactly what you want. And so it would make sense to me that you would want to like pick out yeah. your dress and have it be like exactly fitting. Versus, um, I feel like you'd be like, I don't know, so why don't I just wear grandma's? I, I, I mean that in like a. I know. I, I think I'm just a very sentimental lady. 
Oh, you look great. You know, it's well, so we're funny. like the same size and everything. We're I, the same height, so it really worked for me. It's a really pretty dress. Thanks. Oh, that's cute. It's very royal to me. Yeah. yeah, it's giving royal. It was very well preserved. It is. Yeah. It looks wow. Brand new. Like if you were to steam that baby, it might as well be 1987. And your sister's not wearing that. No. I love the sleeves. Mm -hmm. Also, They're couldn't fun. they? So good. Now, some people, I feel like, they would take this, but then like modernize it. Mm -hmm. But is that even an option for like, would your mom not want that? Well, that's the thing. I've seen people like take bits of their mom's dress and even put it on like the robe that they get ready in. I think at that point, like you have to just assume like the dress is done because if you're taking scraps from it, right. like it's never going to be the same. It has a big bow in the back. So I was debating if I like for my rehearsal dress, if I put the bow on it, I thought that could be cute. Gotcha. But well, I mean, I, it's a really pretty dress, yeah. but it also like it does look like it might be from like 1980. Seven. Seven. Correct. So I'm just saying, like, if you wanted to wear it, you could, like... Take bits. Or, or, or just, modernize. Or just tweak. Just, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, what the Little fuck do I know about snip. wedding dresses? But, like... <laughs> I want Nick in charge of my wedding I dress. Oh, wow. Good. It looks nice. Thanks. Well, I was going to ask, on the topic of destination weddings, I feel like there's, on one hand, it's kind of cool because you're, mm -hmm. people are already taking time off to go to the wedding, so you're sort of being like, let's make a vacation out of it. You're also asking people to travel. So I'm curious about what your take is on having a destination wedding where all friends and family have to travel a long distance to attend. I, uh, well, just in case you guys are interested, if I had unlimited resources. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, Nick. Yeah, if you had unlimited resources, what would the theme of your wedding uh, be? It would be like, a, it would be a very, it would be a New York City <gasps> metropolitan. That's fun. Wedding. Nice. Yeah. Like that it would be in tie. New York? Yeah, it'd be like in Manhattan. Do you have a venue in mind? No. Central Park. You could do the ceremony it, it in Central would be, Park. It would be like a very like Manhattan black tie wedding. Somewhere Are we going to get cool. like an advance notice? I'm not having it there. Oh, I, okay. I, I think the wedding industry is insane and, and in a giant waste of money. And it's one day. And unless someone's going to give me this experience, I, I'm, I don't see myself paying for a this type of wedding that would be hundreds of thousands of dollars. Right. As a former event slash wedding planner, just don't tell them it's a wedding. You'll usually get it for cheaper. Like for a venue. You just... I would have always just like, I what I would tell people is I'm like, it's a cocktail reception. Ooh. Like that's how I would get quotes don't, from people. Don't people like, don't, don't they know? Haven't they figured <laughs> out the scam by this point? <laughs> I don't know. Be like, oh, so a wedding. <laughs> <laughs> a cocktail event. <laughs> like a cocktail event. We're just... You know, yeah, um, it's a birthday party. It's a celebration of, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, we've been dating. Yeah. And, uh, anniversary <laughs> party. First anniversary. It's so good. Uh, destination weddings. Uh -huh. What are your thoughts? Yeah. I think if they love you enough, they're going to be there. And that's why I think I want to do a destination wedding. Because I'm from Arkansas. And if somebody has a wedding, the whole town is coming. Go Razorbacks. You're from Arkansas? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. And that would have not, I guess. But that. like the whole town is there. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And so for me, I'm like, nah, <laughs> I'm not going to invite, you know, I love Aunt Susie. That was my third grade teacher. But people that are going to be at the wedding are going to fly wherever I am. You know, mm -hmm. I'm uh, I'm fine with them. You know, but they're not my favorite. I just feel like what are you? Stop using, thank you. I need the modifier there, the dangling modifier. I was like, your family, the destination. <laughs> We're talking I'm, about I'm destination. Fine with there's them. so many vague <laughs> things. I was like, yeah, same. <laughs> destination wedding. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. We well, I needed about? that at the beginning of the sentence. Yeah. I feel like it's one of those things where a lot can can go wrong. And I want, I hope that when I get married, that we have the mindset that today is our day. And I don't care. You know, show up, don't show up. I don't know. Like, you got right. the invite. It's not my problem at this point. Yep. Well, I'm focused on the person I'm getting married, et cetera, et cetera. But I think a lot of people don't have that mindset. Mm -hmm. And and all of a sudden, travel problems and weather. And, you know, my it's like one of those things that with a wedding, my my goal is to just not care about anyone else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then your bride. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. And uh, that's the whole point of it. And so <laughs> I guess if I want to like, because like if I, it's like I wouldn't want a destination wedding because I want to think of like 
where can other people, I, not, not to sound like selfish, but I don't care if, I guess, if you have fun, I suppose, mm. at my wedding. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm inviting people because apparently you want to celebrate the love I have with this person. So, yeah, you're welcome to come. Yeah. But, like, I'm not, it, I don't care if you have fun. Right? Is that crazy to say? I know a lot of people are like, did you have fun at my wedding? And like, yeah, but I'm like, I don't, I'm going to have the mindset of like, yeah, I don't care. I'm but I think you might you have a better was. day that way also. That's, yeah. Because I, I was talking to a friend who got married in the fall and I might have already spoken about it on the show, but it was the perfect day for a lot of us. And I think we were asking her at some point, like, you had the best wedding. Everyone had an amazing time. Like how, what, any advice, you know, to, for like the rest of us. And she was like, because I didn't go into it thinking mm. this has got to be a perfect yeah. day or this is a perfect day. She was like, it was a good slash great day. And she just rolled with it. And that's why she had the best time. Yeah. I don't care if you have fun at my wedding. <laughs> that's the pull quote of the it episode. It really is. <laughs> but I 100% agree with you. And I feel like as a girl, that's like a crime to say. Because. Right. I feel like I've triggered probably people. Seriously. Who are because. I feel like people are like, I want at, this wedding is for the family, whatever. And I'm like, it's, I mean, like you said, you're here to celebrate me. We're not here to celebrate, not in a selfish way, but it's, it's your one day that you're mm -hmm. celebrating, not even just me, but me and my husband or, you know, whoever. So yeah, I don't give, it's like, celebrate me. Don't celebrate me. Yeah. I don't care. I'm going to celebrate this. Yeah. You can show up if you, you want. show up. I mean, here's the invite. I don't like, it's, it's start, <laughs> we're starting without you. I don't like. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. That's definitely going to be my mindset. That's good. You know, it's good. Uh, other than like my parents and her parents mm -hmm. and, and things like that. Well, if we want to speak about another happy couple in Bachelor Nation, Becca Tilly and Haley Kiyoko came out as a couple. They've been together for like four years. Yeah, for a while. I uh, love them. Yeah. They're great. Haley released a new song called For the Girls, and it was Bachelorette themed because I guess Haley was portraying the Bachelorette in it. And then in like the last moments of the music video, there was a late comer to the rose ceremony and it was, it was Becca. Becca. Yeah, Haley told me yeah. about it at the, uh, I, we, we, Natalie and I ran into them at the um, Elton John uh, Oscar, post Oscar party. Okay. They were both there and Haley was telling me about it and it was really exciting. And I, I mean, I think a lot of like, I think a lot of people like myself, you know, friends of, you know, like Becca's a friend. I'm not like super close with her, mm -hmm. um, but we we all kind of knew. And it was like, you know, you just wanted to respect it. But I'm just so happy for them to be able to just be out in public. I don't mm -hmm. care who you are. If you have a any type of public profile and you're dating someone, it's like yeah. you want you want privacy because like for whatever the reason you want privacy. But then you want like people to know because like there's this weird thing of not telling people and it sounds like uh, you know they're just happy that everyone knows and i'm just happy they're happy yeah, yeah. four uh, years is a long time it's a very long time something. to keep something in yeah, secret for yeah. sure four years man so yeah they're great yeah. yeah so i thought that was cute and then becca used the hashtag uh 95p which is apparently the nickname that she had given Haley on her podcast because she never wanted to reveal Haley's identity. So Haley's nickname or like pseudonym that Becca would refer to her as was 95P, which stands for she's 95% sure that this is like her person mm, or they're like going to end up together. Interesting. Which I thought was cute. 95P. Yeah. Mm. And we have our first promo for the Gabby and Rachel duo bachelorette. Um, I saw they're calling him... E Calling themselves best friends. Yeah, they call themselves best friends. It's I'll be honest, I don't totally buy it or believe it, but I'm sure they're friendly and I'm sure they're friends. And I'm not trying to start a con con uh, controversy, but I just feel like this is more ABC mm -hmm. just saying, no, they're best friends. <laughs> yeah. And now they're going to have to like overdo their friendship where in <laughs> well, reality, like, they're probably just like cool. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. Met, they met on last season. And like, yeah. yeah, they went through this weird experience together. They went through that rose ceremony from hell and that bonds people. But it's not like, you know, ABC found two friends to right. begin well, with and it, then made them best well, friends. Well, that's the thing. Like, yeah. this, this going on the show is like summer camp. And some people become truly best friends. You often find like your you know, your soul brother or soul sister or whatever. Like you're like, I've, I feel like we've been destined, you know, mm -hmm. and other people are just like, yeah, you're cool. You know, we get along kind mm -hmm. of thing. And it's just like knowing the show that they're going to jam this best friend thing down our throats. <laughs> and so much that we're going to be like, yeah. I don't really know if they are. 
from just, your two seasons of The Bachelorette, if you had to split being The Bachelor with someone else, who would you have wanted to split it with? Ooh, good question. Yeah, Obviously, Sean, right? <laughs> oh, Sean Lowe? No, I was being sarcastic. Sean Booth. Oh, Sean Booth. I'd probably do Ben. Why not? Mm -hmm. Ben and I are so different. You know, and I think you want someone who's generally has a different personality than you, then that you're not competing. Mm. Are these girls the same? Do they have the same personality? I don't think they're similar I think pretty at all. different vibes. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Gabby's more, you know, like goofy, doesn't take herself too seriously. I, Rachel yeah. seems more yeah. of the tra traditional, traditional yeah. romantic. Not that that's saying it. We don't know much about either of them, yeah. to be honest. I mean, I just remember Gabby being very much like before Fantasy Suites. She stood out to me because she told him, you know, go and explore things with other women. She, to me, strikes me as maybe more of a yeah. free spirit. Hmm. Well, I guess that, we'll see on July 11th. It is more the, I think you pointed this out, the uh, the Katie budget. So that's what I was going to point out because it's like this, this reminds me of Katie season. The white <laughs> backdrop, the rose petals, the like very staged, almost looks Not more like it's, Katie budget. it's like made for print. <laughs> And then you have the like Hannah in what Bra world would they wear that? that yeah, like that's, but then you have. I'm sorry, those are bad dresses. You have the Michelle and the <laughs> Hannah Brown promos with right. floral and couture dresses, and it's interesting to me because it's not like they even happen con consecutively. It's not like oh, because of COVID, we're now having to do these standard on set. Mm -mm. They've alternated. We had Katie with the white backdrop. People called it the J.C. Penny photo shoot. Then we had Michelle, and she got a custom designer dress. They had the whole thing with all the flowers yeah. and the basketball court. Then we went back to this. It's just, I'm it's like, like, they what rolled gives? out a Corvette and yeah. they got some dresses from TJ Maxx and said, throw this on. Yikes. Get in, loser. We're going shopping. Like one of their moms is good with fabrics, and they went to Joanne <laughs> Fabrics or something. And <laughs> It does look like that. It looks like that. Yeah. Whatever. I don't know. I honestly, I don't know who. Like, this is that's an ABC thing. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what people. What always... was your promo like? Was it more like this on like a stage? No, it was like, am I a bad boy or am I a good guy? Oh, kind of thing. It was kind <laughs> okay. It's kind of fun. Was that the like, way they did bad, the man on the I've street? been good. I've been misunderstood. Thing that oh, was a song. That's fun. Yeah, whatever. But yeah, it's a it's an ABC choice. People are, like if there's a lot as we kind of talked about like last week. You got ABC. You, Warner Brothers owns The Bachelor. They produce The Bachelor. ABC shows The Bachelor. They market The Bachelor mm. because it's on their show, and there's thousands of people who work on this show. And and this is what we got. Yeah, I, it's wow. like I feel like the fans like when we, you know, we we refer to producers and things like that. I feel like the fans have this perception that it's like the seven doors, you know, <laughs> like it's like the seven evil people who like, like puppet masters yeah. who have yeah. all the power and control. And they've always been the same people. Like, no, you got mm -hmm. producers who like work, who are storytellers who work on the grounds, who are like mm -hmm. cultivating the story and putting them in situations and planning. And then you have date producers who plan the dates. And then you have producers who edit the show and then you have people in marketing and you have people in social media and, and often Warner Brothers and ABC like don't always agree on how to do go about these things. It's it's um, thousands of moving pieces, but they got the Katie budget this time. I can't believe you said that. Uh, any so other close. bachelor? Have you spoken to your friend Greg lately? Because uh, rumor has it he and French girlfriend are no longer together. I've not spoken with Greg in a while. So we may be getting him on Paradise, if that's the case. I don't think so. Mm, okay. I don't think we'll see Greg on Paradise. I think we'll see his buddies there, that whole little I think friend so. squad. I'll be, I'll be surprised if we see Greg. Okay. I feel, I feel confident about that. But I might be working with information that I, I haven't talked to him in a while. Okay. I also. Maybe reach out. Maybe just check in, you know. That's great. What just else? Matt James went on Watch What Happens Live with mm -hmm. Andy Cohen. Uh -huh. And while he was on there, this wasn't even necessarily like an interview segment. It was like a game, like so almost like a quick fire. It's a very interactive show. Yeah. It's like fans will ask questions. So there wasn't a lot of time to add context or go into it because it was like kind of rapid fire. But Matt did say that Rachel Kirkconnell, his girlfriend, and Tyler Cameron have a, quote, love-hate relationship. Matt said this, not Rachel. Matt said that. Rachel was in the audience and apparently laughed in response to that. Um, but again, it was rapid fire, mm. so there wasn't any context or details. Uh, 
Matt and Rachel have moved from New York to Miami, so maybe Tyler's they have? mad that yeah. they moved. Or maybe it's like a brother-sister love-hate relationship where it's just like nudge-nudge. I think it'd be juicier if Rachel said that than Matt. Hmm. Right? Because when someone says, oh, we have a hate, a love-hate, I think when someone says that, the emphasis is on the hate. <laughs> yeah. And that's his best friend. Yeah. So I feel like so he wouldn't say that. his girlfriend and his best like, friend. But Matt said it. I don't think it's a thing. Who knows? And she's so sweet. Yeah. Like, I mean, you can hate people when you're sweet, but like, yeah. you know what I mean? Well, she, she's from Georgia. She, yeah, she's like yeah. me. She's yeah. a southern girl. Southern and girl. I feel like, yeah, as someone who's dating someone who's also from the South, <laughs> like, yeah. there's like a polite way of letting someone know you don't like you them. You don't like and them. And that is by saying like, you know, just... just bless love, her heart. Bless her heart. Love, hate. Just love, love, love hate. hate. But like, hate. <laughs> um, but Matt said it. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, who knows? Maybe right. they're just, I mean, they're, I feel like his closest people in life. Maybe Tyler felt a bit of, if your best friend and your roommate and your closest buddy who you view as kind of a brother suddenly, like, starts dating someone really seriously or potentially gets engaged, like, I don't know. It's like, maybe you have a bit of animosity towards that person. They took him away. Or when Matt hangs out with Tyler, it's just, like, a sea of women Mm. And, and maybe like every time like Matt's like hey I'm gonna go hang out with Tyler maybe it's like a uh, fear of like what's that environment gonna look like because you know he's a Tyler's a hot commodity and and uh, when maybe they're out like it's you have a bunch of women they're, it's in Matt and you get Tyler more approachable it could be a, maybe a love uh, that maybe that's what she hates about it I also think like I, I have a friend who I go into hooligan mode instantly the second I'm with them and I think maybe it's kind of one of those situations where that's it's like, it's not like he's gonna too. do any fuck shit but he might be a bit of a hooligan and especially if like you walk in mm -hmm. and they're watching TV just like snickering and giggling and like just being like general little menaces it's like I think sometimes you can be very perceptive to like your if your significant other might feel like oh I know whenever she comes home I'm always doing this or I know I'm doing I don't know you can just kind of put yourself under a microscope. Mm -hmm. well, I was getting like maybe she feels like third wheel vibes when she's with them. Maybe it's possible too. You know they're very because close. they're like they're like boys. Yeah. yeah. You know and like I don't know I've been in that situation when I'm dating someone and he's with this boy and I'm like. You're not going to talk to me at all tonight? Yeah. Like, Am I you're not even going to look at me? Yeah. yeah, you have these like because years and years they have of inside bro, jokes. Yeah, they have this bromance. But and we, she's kind of like, okay. We all agree it's not a nothing statement. To say that about like your best friend. Love, hate. You know, I wouldn't want Natalie to say that about, I guess, any of friends that I have like a true like mm -hmm. closeness to. I'd be like, well, what? What does that mean? Well, let, but it's, let's it talk would about that be, hate part. Yeah. Be, <laughs> <laughs> the context would be you saying that about Natalie and one of your friends. Because it's not like Rachel said that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, it, sure. Yeah. But like if. You wouldn't want to feel like Natalie had yeah. a love-hate relationship with one of your friends. Yeah. I would, I would, I wouldn't ignore that comment. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, huh, something there. I don't know what it is. Maybe we'll. I don't know. Maybe we'll get more. Time for texting office hours. Uh, we have some good ones. You ready for this, Madison? So ready. Let's do it. How's it going? Good. My name is Lex. I'm uh, 28 years old and I uh, live in Chicago. Hey, Lex. How can we help? Um, so I have two guys that I uh, have like problems not knowing who to text. Um, I typically, I'm like kind of in like a very single phase right now. I've really been kind of slut, like, and I'm cool with that. It's kind of the phase I'm in right now. Um, but, and usually I don't have like any problem texting guys. I like pretty much have like a pretty like good roster, pretty like happy dating and like sleeping around doing whatever. Um, but recently I've been uh, sleeping with this like younger guy for the first time ever. And um, we're gonna uh, just call him young guy. Okay. Um, and it's honestly like, the best sex I've ever had in my life, but he lives with his parents and then like 20 minutes away, not in the city. Um, mm, yeah. yeah. So it's a little inconvenient to just like text him be like, Hey, like come over. And like the last text I sent him was like about like, just like something we had talked about. Um, 
when we were here and he just like didn't respond. And now I just like, don't know if I should like reach out again or wait till he texts me that he's in the city or like what I should do there. What about the other guy? Are, 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 are these situations in any way, I mean, they're connected in the sense that you are a single woman who is being single and living her best life. Yeah. And, and they're just two independent stories yes they're not they're not related at all the the other one is a little is a is a slightly different well it's a very different situation okay. um we're just gonna we'll call him an older guy so i've known this guy for like eight years we like had worked together and the his last day we started hooking up because he just like wouldn't hook up while we worked together um but that was like eight years ago so i was 20 and he was 29 at the time um so every time we've been single since then, we've like been hooking up and we were hooking up last year for a while. And then he got a girlfriend. So we stopped. And then um, he hit me up recently, like a couple, like maybe two weeks ago or something, um, asking what I was up to. And like, he ended up like calling me. So if you look at the text that I'd sent, so there was a call in the middle of that, that we talked on the phone for like an hour, like catching up. Um, and we had like made plans to go on a date. And then he had canceled a uh, day of with kind of like a lame response and like a, like, not like a, he, he didn't like reset the plan. So I kind of like called him out on that. Okay. And then we haven't really like talked since. All right. So, um, let's, so I don't let's... know if I should reach out to him or if I should just let that go. I feel like you're going to tell me that he probably got back with his girlfriend and you just hit well, me up too quickly. We'll, we'll see. Let, let's, fo- like, they are very independent. So let's focus at one at a time, I think. Okay. Yeah. So just to recap, young guy. Yes. Great sex, lives yes. in the suburbs with his parents. Yeah. It'd be one thing, you know, his age is kind of not super relevant. It just like adds to the story of him living with his parents in the suburbs. Yeah. Where yeah. it's almost just like, can you come out and play, Jimmy? You know? Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. And I've never right. dealt with someone younger. And so it's really interesting. He's like, I mean, he's, he's only four years younger than you. I mean, it's not that. Yeah. But I typically go like 10, 20 years older. So going four years younger is a big oh, difference. So for you, it's a big shift. Okay. I, I've never gone even like a, a day younger than me. And Can then I, I'm just first... curious. Uh, I don't yeah. think you f- usually find that younger men, uh, what makes him good? Like what? Dude, I, I, you don't know? I, I, it, like sex wise? Yeah. Like what makes him good? I mean, usually. It, I mean, he's I, like word on the street not, is like like younger, more inexperienced men who grew up watching porn. I mean, that's aren't as good not. and bad as maybe like other people. And here you have this like young, you know, he's not that young. He's twenty four, but he. I mean, he is super young in terms of the sexual experience. He's like literally only lost his virginity like three years ago. So I'm like, he, how is this real life? Like, I don't get what it. Makes like, him I don't good. understand. I mean, literally he'll be over it. And like, he came over the other day, just like, cause I was, he called me, he's like, I'm in your neighborhood. And I was like, well, I'm going out to dinner with some girlfriends. He was like, I'm like literally like two blocks from your house. I was like, all right, fine. Like you can come over, you have 30 minutes. He made me come like three times before, like in like 10 minutes, like from when he arrived. Like, I'm like, I don't, like, I don't, I don't understand. All right. So you can't put a finger on it, but it's good. <laughs> yeah. But he can put a finger on it. He can put a finger on it. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Am I allowed to say these things? You said I'm sorry. I, don't really yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I just thought what th- I was wondering if there was like a a takeaway, I'm something dead. to look for. I'm or, I don't. I, you're just. I don't know. I, I don't, also, for reference, like you know, he's like six eight and wears like a size fifteen shoes, so like that's also very helpful. <laughs> okay. So you, he's well endowed. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. It's exciting times for you. Um, <laughs> And so where did we leave it off with? Uh... Um, with the young guy? Yeah, um, with young so... guy. I feel like calling him young guy is such a disservice. I know. Uh, I feel bad for him. Like, uh... <laughs> um, Let's call him Theo. He had left in the morning. Okay. We hung out for, you know, whatever. So we hung out at night. We hung out in the morning. And then he left. And I sent a picture. I was at Target. And God, I don't even know that I can say this on this. So I sent a picture of a... A waterproof mattress pet protector because we had talked about how I needed that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I, Can, yeah, keep the sheets clean. Uh, Target yeah, really knew was, what I needed after the combo today, uh, and was sitting yeah, at the end because of, it was like soaking. How did my he respond? How did mattress. he respond to? Uh, Didn't respond at all. So now I'm like, do I reach out? Do oh, I that was a, that was it. Yeah, that was the last Ooh. thing I said to him. All right, so, so for well, for the people times. listening at home. Obviously, we know there's this very sexual relationship. 
Uh, yeah, I'm he, not trying to date him. Trust me. No, it's like, fine. At no, all. He I'm does talk like he's 24. <laughs> he says bet yeah. a lot. Uh, 100% he talks like he's 24. Bet. Uh, okay. um, and then you sent that. Did you talk about this? We talked about needing a, a waterproof mattress protector underneath my sheets because it was a problem. That it was like causing stains on my mattress. And how did he respond to that? When we were talked in person? Oh, yeah. No, like it was, it was cool. Playful, like we just, cool. Yeah. I mean, like we were soaking the bed from corner to corner and like leaving stains on my mattress. <laughs> so I said I needed a mattress, a waterproof mattress protector. Are you going to lay this out next time? Uh, it's already under underneath my Good sheets. For you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think you just reach out to this guy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like, do you have a no risk thing going on here? I mean, any- yeah, I just don't want to come off as like, like desperate like i already texted him and like he didn't text me back and he lives in the suburbs so it's not like it's not like it, i'm gonna it, be like hey it, like it come seems, over at like two in the morning it and seems like, to it, me that you have a rapport with this guy that you're allowed to say things like hey do you want to come over and fuck or yeah i mean he, he i mean i he do did that, that when with, i know he, he's in the he, city he, but he i just that don't know you. when he's in the city yeah so i mean you, it sounds like you have a pretty even graphic relationship. You're sending pictures of like clean sheets. So even if, <laughs> if even if like you sent him a message and apologize for my crudeness, and if you were like, I miss that, you know, whatever, yeah. like you could, I don't know if that's so what you want to do. I don't think he would care. Like if you're asking me if like, if he would mind you reaching out to him and you wouldn't sound desperate by saying, Hey, I like, I'm desiring you. Like however you want to let yeah, him know yeah, that yeah, you're yeah. desiring him, I think is totally yeah. fine and okay. Okay. All right. You Just have like a sexual, you have a sex only relationship with this guy. Oh yeah. For so sure. like make it about sex. Okay, I just don't want to come off too desperate and lose it because it is so good. So, like, that's what. It, well, that's I mean, the... I, you're dealing with a 24 year old guy who's living with his parents. This this could go away at any moment, and if he's that good <laughs> with with sex, then he's probably you know out there. Yeah, like, yeah. This will end at some point. Oh, I know. You I, know, I, so I, I know. I would just like to try not to get cause... too dickmatized, so that when it is goes away, you, you don't you don't convince yourself you're in love. Oh, we, don't worry. He's too stupid for me to fall in love with him. <laughs> bet. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's like, he's a little, he's like, you know, a little, oh, little his words, not mine. A little crazy. Uh, so, you know, probably why it's so good. Yeah. I think you reach out and you be very forward about okay. what you specifically want from him. Because if, if this guy is just about like fucking and having as much sex, then what he doesn't want is someone who does look like he likes them or is getting clingy. So yeah. the more you can make it about the sex and clear, because that's what you really want, then there's no way for him to get worried that you like start to like him. Okay. Just make it more about the act. Yeah, and maybe make okay. it logistical because it sounds like it's, yeah. it sounds like this is kind of like you're not going to triple text him type thing. So it's like yeah. we want this to result in plans. So I think you could be like, when's the next time you're going to be in the city? Because insert whatever wild sex shit you want after. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Send I a, also send I think, a nude. I don't know. Like, or like I would if if there's something like specific you could reference. Why are you I'm crazy. <laughs> She's got, she's got fucking. I have so many mat <gasps> mattress protection. Like, I have so many thoughts. Right, we're just context matters. I think what you want to do is, I think you want this message mm -hmm. to like implant him with the image of you guys fucking. Like, I think you want to yes. send something like kind of like, I, I don't know if you want to say something like specific, like referencing one thing that you did that you know you both really liked, or yeah. just but like like when's the next time you're going to be in the city because I want you to what or like whatever it is. Yeah. So that yeah. way it's no. like you're no, being I like, already know what it is. So okay. yeah, that's I think that's perfect. <laughs> All right, make, just make it about the sex. What? But what are he your... lives with his parents. What does <laughs> no. that? What does that have to do with? What if it pops up on his phone? And I'm like a dull this by myself. Like. <laughs> What if it pops up on his phone? Like, what if we're like sending something that vulgar? I don't know. I, I'm not worried about his mom picking okay. up. I, okay. Yeah, it just seems like a kid who like probably had Playboys in his room 
at like under his bed at 14 and the type of friend that I would go to when my parents didn't let me do anything. It sounds like he's probably this guy who just like his mom still does his laundry and he lives at home, but he has a very independent life. He's probably had his own TV and like cable in his bedroom and like, you know, like his home, his room was probably like his sanctuary where his parents like respected his privacy, even though he was nine. Like that's, <laughs> that's who I envision. You, you know who like, that yeah. that friend who like I was like wait you're allowed to do this like what in what world <laughs> you know and you'd go over there and like watch rated R movies and shit like that when you were a kid like this is seems that like friend. that's this is him so oh, the yeah. fact that he lives with his parents like he just he lives with his parents because like that's his sanctuary <laughs> you know I I at eighteen it's like I get the fuck out I got no privacy I can you know he's not worried about privacy so mm. I don't I wouldn't worry about mom and dad. Yeah, I'm I'm not too worried about it. What's going on, Madison? I, <laughs> <laughs> I stress her out, I can tell. I'm sorry, girl. I'm sorry, girl. She's, First she's of all, from Arkansas. She's a little I, bit more I'm like I love the red hair, girl. You're killing it. Thank you. Do you want my honest opinion? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think you're I think you're better than this. I think you <laughs> not like in, in a way where I'm like, you're 28 years old. Yeah. You're beautiful. You look like you got it going yeah. on. We're around kind of the same age. I just turned 27. I'm like, I feel like, I don't know. I just feel like he, he not that it's bad if you live with your parents, but I'm yeah. like, I feel like, I mean. Why can't she get some good she can do what She can do whatever she wants to do. She can do whatever she wants to do. But I'm just saying, like, I feel like, I feel like you're questioning it a lot too, you know, which causes you anxiety and not to bring it full circle, but I'm like, if he wanted to, he would. You know what I mean? So if he wanted to text you back, or you, you're you not yeah. you're not about, because you're not about, you don't want a relationship at all. That's what I'm saying. She doesn't want a relationship. Yeah. yeah. So, that's, so you're like, just like, not, you're just like They're both having using fun. each other no, I was friends. in like a very serious relationship yeah. for years, and now I'm just like having fun and dating like inappropriate men, whether they're 25 years older or younger. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm just having fun right now. Like, so. right? You're in the... Uh, straight sex as long you know the your only your only expectation and requirement is mutual consent and as long as that's happening <laughs> and they're fun and yeah, yeah you know cool right. people to be around but so yeah. i guess i would only disagree in that sense because you can disagree. She's, she's she because that's not her motive this is not her feelings yeah, yeah she's not you're not being vulnerable you're not worried about them you're just worried about I just don't want to double text. <laughs> like to be honest, like Well, that's just... that's where I think you're you're yeah. you're doing yourself a disservice. If you don't care, yeah. you don't care. Right. Yeah. So, if you double text and he gets annoyed by you or disinterested, all you're losing is the good sex, which bummer, you won't that be having. That feels like anymore. a big loss to be honest. Fine, but like just like <laughs> to don't let your ego take over mm -hmm. something that yeah. you are saying, I it's just about the sex, it's not about him. Yeah, yeah. You know, and yeah. oh, he's too dumb to date or whatever. Like you, you yeah. don't like at some point, like you don't like him. You're you yeah. he's adding only value for sex and like, yeah, he might be great, but like whatever. Yeah. And so that's you kinda have more nothing, of what I'm saying. You have nothing to lose. So don't yeah. act don't act like you have something to lose. Just be mm -hmm. straightforward, I guess is that's what I'm for sure. My point. All yeah. right. Uh guy number two. Yeah. Okay. So this is a vastly different situation. And I feel like I already know what you're going to say <laughs> is to not text him because okay. like it is toxic <laughs> a little bit. You think it's toxic? Uh, uh, you know. Sum up, my, sum up to me why you think it's toxic. Uh, because I've always had more feelings for him than he's had for me. I would be the hopeful one, as you would say. <laughs> oh, okay. More so with him than anyone. You know, like so over you the like years, him. I've always liked him. If yeah. he called you up today. Oh. And said, "What the fuck am I doing? I want to be with you." You would say, "I'm I'm down to try for sure." Yeah. Oh okay. yeah. Oh yeah. Like we have a long history. Like I said, like eight years I've known him. Every time I start hanging around him again, my sister thinks it's like the funniest thing ever because like he's the one who's always made me like really like like I don't know what to text. Like I don't know what to do. Whereas like with other guys, I'm like um, they're fine. You know, like whatever. Like I I feel like I have control and I lose it more so with him. Um, cause I've always liked him and he does have his like shit together, but like, it's never going to work because I know that he wants like a family, family and like children sooner rather than later. And he's, you know, like 10 years older than me. And like, that's what he wants. You don't want that right so, now. 
I don't think I want kids ever, to be honest. Okay. Um, but definitely, definitely not in the next five, five years for sure. But I don't think ever. So, um, and then why, why, why are we waiting? Well, so other than you like, I just Michael. really, yeah, I just really like him. Like I've always really liked him. Like he's, he's always like pushed me to like be better. And he's been one that's always been like able to like, get through to me. He's like been, been the one who's like been able to push me into therapy and to like trying to leave the service industry. And like, he's, he's always been one who's like pushed me to be better. And I've always like okay. respected his like opinion. And yeah, I've just always liked him. But anyways, like, I know we're not going to date. I know that's the situation. Cause like, we do want very different things and he's way more like emotionally mature than I am at this point. Like, I feel like he's got his shit together and I'm like still trying to figure it out. And um, you're, and you're been, you've been hanging out with him. No. So he recently broke up with his girlfriend, which we always hang out when we're both single. Okay. And he hit me up. I don't know when they broke up. I know the last thing they posted together was like in March. Um, but he recently hit me up and um, like asked what I was doing, whatever, uh, asked me to hang out. We ended up, he end, or I ended up saying like, I couldn't meet up that night that we had planned. He ended up calling me. We talked on the phone for like an hour, catching up. Um, we were supposed to hang out the next day. He made a dinner reservation, ended up canceling it like day of. It's kind of like a lame excuse and like didn't, um, didn't like, he was like rain check, but didn't like schedule something. And I was like, Hey, like that was kind of bullshit. Like, you know, like, so let's, you, let's, let's, let's read the text. Yeah. Yeah. Still trying to get my life back in order from this weekend. You free tomorrow or Friday? Sorry, but something came up today and I can't meet you. Have to uh, take a rain check. Weather sucks today, so maybe I'll be, it'll be warm soon and we can ride like a motorcycle. Yeah. Okay. Dang, a cancellation and a vague reschedule. I'm a little disappointed, sir. I'm sorry. I know that's rude. I have a lot going on right now and I just can't let anything drop or it will really fuck things up for me. No worries. I get shit comes up. I just hope I'll get to see you soon. He didn't respond yeah, to so, that? No. And it's been like two weeks. Yeah. So I think he got back with his girlfriend to be like, to be completely honest. Like that my assumption is that he texted me too quickly after they broke up and they got back together. That would maybe, that's like or my... maybe not, or, or who knows? But like, I think more importantly, like you, you're right that, he's just not going to be your guy and he probably yeah, senses your interest in him and he knows. yes he knows so like if i'm him and i'm like respectful of you and i care about you as a person and even though i like you and to your point maybe he had a moment of weakness and vulnerability to reach out to you because he is comfortable with you mm. and then was reminded via text of your interest in him and probably decided to back away because it might complicate things, especially if he's like this emotional, mature person that you're referring to. So regardless yeah. if I got back together with my girlfriend or not, I would want to back away from something where I felt like, you know, that person was more hopeful than I was. Yeah. And so I would just... I and would, he said things to me like that in the past. Yeah, so that's what's going on. Now for you, like, I, I think you need to like, you know, when you said, you know, he's helped me this and he's helped me do that. Yeah. That's great. And I think you can have a lot of love for people and care for people who've done those things for you. But yeah. But, like, you still got to see the whole picture. Yeah. Right? You still got to see, you know, from a 30-foot view of what the whole scene looks like, you know, like from an airplane, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah, he's helped you and made you feel good about this and he's guided you. That's great. But there's other aspects where he's not feeling a need for you. Yeah. And you have to see that as, you know, also part of who he is. He's not the yeah. only person in this world who yeah, can like make you feel good about yourself or, you know, give you like a the the talking to about like, hey, I know you're making a lot of money bartending or waiting tables, but like, and you might make a little bit less money in a short period of time, but like, you know, this yeah. might be something you have to get out of and you have to go backwards before you go forward, you know, that type of conversation or yeah. people who believe in you. So like, mm -hmm. you're just, you've latched onto this one guy as someone who's really made you feel good about yourself and you've probably given him and that relationship too much credit. And maybe yeah. it's because overall, you're just not all that interested and and being in a relationship yeah i'm not <laughs> so so yeah i think you're just you enjoy this guy it's fine it's fun he makes you feel a certain way 
And it's like, these are identical situations in the fact that you have two different guys feeling very feeling very specific needs for you. Mm -hmm. And those specific needs, you like that feeling they give you. Yeah. But obviously it's, you're not in a relationship with either of them. So both, both of these needs are filling. You have to just accept that they're going to come and go and you have to be yeah. careful not to chase them and lose your yeah. power because they're very temporary things. Right. That's what I'm worried about. Like I, in just in general, just like over, over texting to like lose power. Cause I'm okay with guys filling different voids. Like that's what a roster is for. Like different guys fill yeah. different places, you know, but like, I like, I mean, I would get out of your ego where like, if you have to double text, who gives a shit? Yeah. I agree. You know, but the point in which you are like worrying about it, investing a lot of time, then, then yeah. all that is, is to you is a the signal that you need to like, step away. Yeah. I'm too yeah. invested. I'm too like caught up in this and maybe I need to like you know, get away from it and and find yeah. something else. But like double texting or like putting yourself out there. I mean, honestly like I mean, probably just because you like the guy, you know, I would back away, but like short of of that, like reach I mean, reach out to either of these guys if if you want to hang out with them. Yeah. Like you worrying about like status or like your position of power in this relationship, I think is kind of a waste of your time and energy. You worrying about your energy is a waste of your energy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, like yeah. you, you don't, you're, yeah. you've, you've recognized one, you don't want to date. The other one, you just know it's not going to happen. And you've, yeah. you seem like you've accepted both. Oh yeah. I accepted that like years ago. And, and so you're, you're focusing a ton of energy on things that you've already accepted aren't going to be in your life long term. Yeah. So stop, stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You have to be honest with yourself. Is this a relationship where I should or want to have an expectations of someone? And what are those expectations? And then you have to be consistent with those expectations. Guy one, the expectation is good sex whenever you guys are available. That's it. So yeah. you, it's unfair to change those expectations. Guy two is I'm going to like, go riding or motorcycling or have a good, like we're going to go to a movie because we can, and I'm not going to like, and he might be available. He might not. Things are going to come up. We're, neither, we're not n each other's number one priority, just like the other yeah. guy, but we're just a good time. Yeah. And that's the only expectation I have of this guy, but you yeah. are, you have, those aren't the expectations you have. You have an expectation. I just of respect him everyone to respect. I respect people to respect my time, whether they're my friend, but my boyfriend, someone I'm having sex with. He said, know, sorry. He, didn't schedule. he said, so he didn't schedule he didn't to have me it's like but what if like, yeah but you only reschedule with someone who like you know you want to or have available he didn't reschedule with you because like maybe his calendar was full maybe he didn't know when he was available maybe his calendar yeah. was unclear and it wasn't a huge priority to fit you in to what is otherwise maybe a busy schedule yeah and that's where you're not being honest with yourself about like the expectations you have for this guy come on nick <laughs> bro Unfortunately, he's so correct in everything he's saying. I'm sorry, girl. He's he's really hitting you with the truth. You need this, girl, because I yeah, think you're yeah. exact. You're saying you don't care, but you care. No, I do. I do care. Oh no, I do. Or care. you're saying oh, yeah. okay. the, the second one, I do care. Okay, second one, you care. Yeah, the first Got one, it. no, not at all. Like that's Got it. no. That, so, that yeah. is what it is. The yeah. the I think you're being hard on yourself. I think you're being hard on yourself by calling it toxic, but I think you are recognizing your vulnerability mm, and you're calling yeah. that toxic because you realize you're like you you're you're uneasy. You 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 lack a little bit of the strength that is required to hang out with this person and that's okay. It's okay to acknowledge yeah. that you don't have that. But like yeah. recognizing it before you put yourself in that situation. So right now maybe you shouldn't hang out with him because yeah. it's tripping you up yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I probably should just cut it off. Yeah, but it's hard because <laughs> I know when he hits me up, I'll be like, "Yep, sure, like, come pick me up." Like, <laughs> and that's fine. Maybe you do that. Yeah. Maybe you just say, "You, you know, know what? I'm not going to reach out. If he wants to yeah. hang out, I'll let him hang out, and we'll go out, yeah. and and then we'll see. I'll check in with myself to see if I'm emotionally like, like Able. centered to mm -hmm. like deal with." the yeah. desire to want I mean, more. to be honest, I already know the answer is no. Because <laughs> well, every time I don't see him for like a year and then we hang out, I'm like, fuck, I'm just as weak as I was last time. Aww. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. I'm not going to reach out though. Okay. I'm, I'm going to wait till he does and then go from there. All right. All right. Well, 
Thanks for calling. These were very enter- very entertaining. <laughs> I, I hope so. <laughs> All right. Thank you so All much right. for your help. Take care. Yeah. Have All a right. good one. All right. Bye bye. Madison, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. Uh, you have a song that by the time this well it comes out, it's probably today. No. Yeah, it's probably gonna be. This will be out, out. when this. It's out. That's out. Woo! It's out. Woo! So uh, when you get done listening to this podcast, go listen to Madison's new song. If you wanted to, you would. Yeah. Uh, anywhere you listen to music. Anywhere. Spotify, iTunes. All of the above. Can you? Is there a music video on YouTube? No. It's com- It's coming out right. in a couple weeks. Uh, where else can people <laughs> find you? Everywhere. Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, uh, m- in just, Los Angeles. Just how, and Do you have any, is it just your name? Yep, Madison Watkins. Yep. Everywhere. Everywhere. Oh, I'm so jealous of people who have like a universal. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it took time. It did? It took time. Okay. But you got there. Call got ev- there. every single one. We're changing the name. Uh, congratulations on all your success. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Go listen to Madison's song. Subscribe to our show, write a review, only if it's good, all that fun stuff. We're back next week. You know, it'll be good stuff. And get some help writing text with mm-hmm. Office Hours. Yeah, get some help writing text with Office Hours. I feel like you guys are enjoying this uh, new <laughs> segment. Love you all. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching, but before you go, make sure you like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss any future videos like our Monday's Ask Nick for your favorite relationship stories and advice, and our Tuesday Bachelor Recaps. See you next time.